Hey, what's up, party people? Welcome to a holiday edition of SJU. That's right. We're on vacation, but you're not. You have to watch this for work. And I expect a full report on my desk <laughs> Monday <Whoa>. morning. <laughs> now, you know the drill. We are, we are going to uh, uh, basically just uh, shoot the shit about the year we just had um, while we slowly go insane uh, as we do pre-tape after pre-tape to keep you entertained. That's the SJU promise. Uh, but we begin. We begin with a, uh, a, a year wrap up. Um, what kind of year did we have personally, professionally, <laughs> but most of all, cinematically? <laughs> We've all compiled um, uh, some of our favorite stuff, uh, uh, movies and TV, especially some of our least favorites, um, some of the discourse we'll look back on. And of course, we will answer some uh, uh, viewer questions. Not live. Can't see him. Not watching this right now. But we did gather some earlier that we will get to if there's time. Um, let's just get right into it. Uh, this was a big year. Aren't they all uh, in terms of uh, uh, movies and television? And we did have some favorites and we will each name one movie and then we'll go around and do one TV show. And then if we have time, we'll do another movie. And if we have time for then uh, another TV show. I will begin and I will begin quickly because it will be no surprise um, and not interesting to anyone to hear me talk about it again. My favorite film of 2021 is Dune, folks. Dune part one. <laughs> you may have heard of this. It's a little film and by little, I mean big. It is a big movie, a big girthy movie full of large spaceships and large families and worms and, and such. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes bigger is better. Uh, I think it, 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 this reminds you of a bit how a big Hollywood blockbuster can give you that feeling of awe that I think is missing from a lot of, um, say, direct to screen. Yeah, aren't you in awe of that girth worm, <laughs> girth worm gym over there? <laughs> I'm, I'm not Very popular an adult. Character. <laughs> is the problem. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I see it's easy to go into the worm, but hard to pull out, if you know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, it, 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 I love this movie for so many reasons. I mean, I love the original story that it's based on. Um, I love that it's not a Marvel or DC or fast movie that was still a smash hit because you know what, like we need to show to people out there that sometimes, and I hesitate to say original, but that's, that's the standard we have today is that it's, uh, it's not something that was already popular in theaters that they based this on and, it, and, and people flocked into their living rooms and into theaters to see it. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just, it's great. It, it, it's, you gave Denis hundreds of millions of dollars to do something that he's dreamed about ever since he was a kid. And that dreamlike essence makes it across onto the screen. Uh, I was right there with him. I will be back uh, uh, in 2023 for Dune 2 in my full still suit um, and I just, I just can't wait. This is definitely my favorite cinematic and at home viewing experience of the year. Uh, but that's just me. Let's move on to Danielle. Oh, uh, so for starting with favorite movies. Oh, I have so many. Um, hmm. as far as the theater experiences, um, because I didn't go to theater theaters very much. Fast Nine is my favorite theater experience. It doesn't have to be theater. It could be something you saw at home, but but I'll, gra well, I'll grant you Fast Nine. So something I saw at home that I really liked, I loved Bad Trip. Oh, um, I was going to say Bad Trip. Yeah, that's that's tied with the Barb and Star at Beast of Del Mar. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, so I don't like pranks um, because I, I don't like the idea that it's funny to make someone else sad and uncomfortable. I think that's a fucking weird. I think that's a <laughs> that's weird fine. thing. We'll bleep you. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not going to bleep you. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I think it's a weird thing. But the great thing about Bad Trip is most of those pranks are like happy pranks. Well, they're at the expense of Eric Andre. Um, yes. Like the one yes. getting effed by the gorilla, um, not, you know, somebody unsuspecting. Exactly. Like <laughs> it, it was more like, what do the bystanders see? And not like, I am going to make this person feel terrible think they've been for kidding. my yeah. yeah for my <laughs> enjoyment which is what i hate about pranks yeah, yeah i loved bad trip i thought it, it was, was it was really reaffirming funny. of the human spirit like because people emerge to help yep. in these situations Absolutely. when they see eric andre you know getting beat up or getting dangled off the side of a building like people try to uh, yep. step up and try, try to help them out which is actually very <laughs> sweet uh, and yeah I'll, I'll just piggybacking off of that is like i liked the return i think you know, not in a huge way, but of like silly comedies that that, that weren't afraid yes. to be broad with yep. big jokes. And I was going to say this one and Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar oh, because like, Barb not that Star. I don't love, 
you know, a, a Wes Anderson tone where like, you're not sure if that was a joke or not. <laughs> and, you know, dark comedies and dramedies and stuff like that. But uh, I think there's been a shortage outside of the Sandler verse of like unabashed um, uh, joke filled comedies. And, and I think this was one of the better ones. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I loved it. Eric, what do you got? Uh, first of all, I need to see Bad Trip. There's a million things because you can't keep up with everything. But Bad yeah, Trip's just on to the pause, list. just to interject here, we're doing this way too early because sadly, <laughs> every good movie comes out in the last two weeks of December now. Yeah, just we did that. <laughs> so <laughs> we do have to say, like, uh, except for Eric, n- none of us has seen Spider Man. No, I haven't seen Spider Man. Of- oh, yeah, I haven't seen Spider Man yet. <laughs> um, none of us have seen Spider Man. Uh, uh, Spider Man. Uh, none of us have seen West Side Story except for Eric. Um, so Don't look is up like isn't out yet. Little, I'm sure that's yeah. going to be one of my favorites. And of favorites. course, the King's so, Man. So yeah, and the King's Man is going to sneak in there. Uh, Benedetta. The, 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 I mean, come on. Paul Verhoeven has a, a lesbian nun movie out, and uh, that's <laughs> oh, you already know. I, I I am a Verhoeven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that what they call fans? Oh, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what we call fans of their hoven? I'm a their hoven. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, a their broven. For yeah, sure. I, I know. Like uh, when I actually, you know, a month from now, rank everything, it'll be you know very different, whatnot. But when I did think about what made me happy this year, what was a good time this year, um, I'll go with the Mitchells versus the Machines, which is funny because it, it was supposed to be theatrical. It ended up being sold to Netflix instead in the pandemic uh, fire sale of um, mm. like let's get this stuff everywhere but i actually was able to see this movie in the theater eventually i, I saw it on netflix first but then when they're doing all these like for your consideration screenings here in la i got to go to one with lord and miller and the director mark uh, mike rianda and yes. it kind of confirmed for me how much i love this movie watching it again um just a really great sweet animated movie um you know lord and miller produced it it's definitely got the animation sort of vibe of enter the spider verse um going for it but then this sort of different feel of first family road trip movie um the characters are super likable it's doing a very funny like mashup with a sci-fi story and uh also a play on like tech companies and the mark zuckerberg type uh guy at the center of it who makes uh the machines fight the mitchells in the first place (laughs) um it's also i have to say like it's you want to be like every frame's a painting but like every frame is a panel of a comic book yeah there are literally so many frames where it's like you have to pause you have to watch everything that's happening because there is so much in every frame um in terms of i don't want to spoil anything i mean i love um, just that t-shirt in the background of like the et jurassic park parody it, it, it's not even just that like there's um i'll just say this like it's fine it's not a spoiler um so the main character also um you see a lot of what's going on in her head because she is also trying to be a director so there is in a lot of like shots like a bunch of stuff that you will miss if you don't pause and read it and look at it Mm. it is one of like as far as animation best bar none piece of animation of the year cool i gotta see this this one like yeah uh uh, uh, i would honestly say and i'm not even kidding of the past five years spider-verse mitchell's (laughs) yeah okay all right like i'm not even kidding and there's some yeah there's some stuff they've done you know on on social media and whatnot that is showing some of those sort of freeze frames of because it's you know because she is this young artist slash filmmaker Mm -hmm. some of like her stuff and when if you freeze frame like you were mentioning danielle like crazy details and also insight into like her frame of mind she's a very likable yep. character anyway um and the fact that she's like such a sort of crazy creative person who's writing it all over everything um you know and, and just can't stop putting ideas down so yeah that, it, it's a really cool movie for that minutia but i also just think it's a really sweet family movie that's um so and so yeah it, uh, it it checks all the boxes for me so that's that's up there for me Awesome. Well, yeah, this is, uh, I'm sure by the end of this, I'll have a lot of stuff added to my, to my watch list. Uh, and it's already grown way too unwieldy, but, uh, I just, uh, knowing you, honestly, Spenny, put this at the top of your list. All right. Like Going knowing right you, top. Mitchell, top of the Mitchell. list, Mitchell, M- M&Ms. Mitchell. Got it. Um, all right. Well, we move from the big to the small screen. Um, not that there's much of a difference these days, but we'll talk about our favorite series of the year. Uh, looking back, um, there were a lot of good ones, um, and we, we we picked some real winners here. But for me, it was uh, the mini series, although I guess they're doing a, a season two. Uh, White Lotus, my favorite show. <gasps> oh, I was so happy because that was one that I wanted to mention, and I didn't do it. 
Thank yeah, you. I mean, it was great. Uh, and like, um, I, I don't want to say infuriating, but just like so incredible that uh, the creator, Mike White, they were like, do you have anything that we could like do during a pandemic in one location? And he's like, sure, I'll just, try, let's try this. And it was the best show of the year. Um, they just kind of <laughs> dashed that off casually. Uh, but this is like, um, it's like that reality show below deck, but like scripted where it's like the, the, the servants and the, and the masters, like the, uh, at like a resort. Uh, it's the, Oh, it's definitely uh, upstairs, downstairs. Upstairs, which is downstairs. My shit. That yeah. is my shit. You know, it's the, the, the tension of the haves and the have nots. Um, but then you throw something like a dead body into the midst and, and every character just turns and turns and turns till you see that they've got their real three dimensional characters, but it's still really funny. Um, so amazing to pull that off. Uh, I, I, Jennifer Coolidge has gotten, you know, her flowers and she's, she is rightfully so incredible, but everybody is really good in this movie uh, series. Um, that guy is Shane. The guy who plays Shane is just the perfect, you know, resting douche face that you've ever seen. <laughs> well, well, Shane, uh, Shane is the dude. Um, he, so he is the, I believe he went viral. Um, that's Shane, right? Where he was the guy that went viral because of his he audition. Was, he was doing an audition and I like, didn't see that. Oh God. Oh, because God. he was shamed by the director. Didn't know he could hear him about his crappy apartment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a very it. like, I'll, I'll link it to you. Um, yeah. 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 He was like literally doing an audition and he could hear the director because the director hadn't muted himself. And he was like, oh, look at that poor little apartment. And he was like, I can hear you. <laughs> so uh, if you hire me, then it won't be a poor little apartment. That's amazing. For, it was for like a different like property. But yeah, it was amazing. That's a good improv right there. Yeah. And it, everybody's super talented. And it is, like I said, three-dimensional. Like there is some easy categorization uh, and he really is a complete jerk but at the same time he's kind of right he kind of is getting screwed by the mater d who kind of <laughs> did give him the wrong room <laughs> that's a point um and then there's uh, a yeah the, the yeah. teens were great in it um olivia and and her friend and it's just it's just a really good show about you know wealth and power and whiteness and all the stuff that comes with that and the the ignorance that that enables you to have but it's not done in a uh, preachy or or a prescriptive way it's just it's just uh, dramatized and it's great um so white lotus was my favorite show of the year that's on my list as well uh but i will say that i always like mike white stuff and the fact that he has been on the amazing race and survivor uh, because, he, because he wants to be. Yes. Because <laughs> he near, shares near, my love for their shows. Well, I will always like Britain is amazing, always, literally, literally, literally. And um, yep. Zahn. Steve, Steve Zahn, yeah. All day. Steve Zahn, I'm sorry, <laughs> should have been a bigger star. And it's a tragedy that he was. I think he's got the, I don't know if he wants to, like being the, the that guy, uh, the respected <laughs> in acting circles, but otherwise you can like go to Disneyland without people you know, pointing at you and being mm. an attraction. I think that's, I think he's got the best of both worlds. If I could have an actor's career, it'd be Steve Zahn. I think that would be, <laughs> that'd be the best to be just paid and and you can still go to dinner. And sorry, I think the actor we were talking about was Dylan, not yes. Shane. Was I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. too. But he was on this show. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. All right, I'll check that out. Um, who's next? Uh, who's got a TV show for me? I'll um, go uh, yeah. with, uh, I'll be, I'll be, Spencer, you, you had your, uh, of course, it's Dune. Um, uh, I'll be, Are you going to say Chucky? I'm not going to say Chucky, but that's certainly honorable <laughs> mention. That is certainly honorable mention. That show's amazing. Um, uh, but I will say WandaVision, because it is the show I enjoyed the experience of watching the most this mm. year, um, has a uh, has a uh, uh, a big proponent of the, the weekly release model. This show kind of had it all for me because, it, yes, it's a Marvel show. Guess what, guys? I like Marvel stuff. Um, but I also was like into it from the beginning as far as conceptually what they were doing. Uh, the fact that it was this very meta strange show about TV itself and the different sitcom eras. Um, and the fact that I think it was a show that really we, we especially early in the year when people we were still kind of like not leaving our houses on this at all. We all really enjoyed the experience of watching week to week and engaging with. Um, and so even though I don't think they like quite landed the ending, the ending was my least favorite part. Um, I still like love the show in its totality. Uh, it has great moments in it and uh, great performances in it. And so, yeah, I just like, like, even though there's been other shows I've loved as well, the whole experience of watching that show was such a, gives it one, one notch above, I think for me with WandaVision. Uh, it was really like, um, 
it reminded me of those days where uh, TV was appointment TV. Sorry if you weren't watching at the time, but everyone was tweeting about it. Um, it did end in a lot of goo. Yeah, a lot of flinging goo at each other. Yeah, as yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, that was a great series. I really liked it. Yeah. And, you know, it, I think uh, goo aside, it did a good job of um, not so much like furthering the MCU lore in general, but kind of filling in the characterization that I think the MCU can sometimes miss. Like their yeah. relationship, so much of it was implied or happened off camera or was assumed like on Tumblr or in memes that like that's where you really learn that they loved each other. But this really gave you a sense that they had this uh, this relationship, this genuine and deep love for each other that you didn't really get and a, and a series gives you a chance for the, uh, to really investigate that and for it to breathe. So I think that's kind of the, the first five episodes or so are, are yeah. um, proof mm-hmm. that the MCU on a uh, series uh, is working and can work. But um, like I said, yeah, it kind of, I don't know. We, all, we, we can all nitpick the ending uh, for a while, but, but the journey was, was great to get yes. there. Mm-hmm. I really loved it. Um, Danielle, what's your uh, show? Um, I really, and no one has seen this, but you all should. I really loved Hacks. Oh, I love oh, Hacks. No, no, yeah, Hacks, Hacks is great. great. Was no. So good. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Hacks is great. It was just uh, this story of uh, uh, essentially um, like a woman who, I, I won't, you know, um, but uh, uh, essentially a woman who is a Las Vegas act who winds up hiring a woman who was, um, Twitter canceled. canceled. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's, because, in com- she's in comedy jail. Yeah. Because she tweeted something stupid, yeah. which like, even in the show, it's like, mm, I don't think he would have gotten canceled for that, but it's fine. Yeah. Um, but it's, and, it's not it's so good. Um, <laughs> just so good. And um, the actors are good. The story is good. And depending on what people pick later, I have opinions about people writing about how hard it is to be a writer. <laughs> I'm just kind of done. Yeah, whatever. Um, but this is really funny. So it's okay. Yeah, definitely. But I think that they are, um, uh, she is the butt of the joke that the, whatever her name is, I forget the, the millennial, <laughs> the younger mm-hmm. woman um, yes. who's complaining all Ava. the time. Yeah, Ava. Ava. Um, by Hannah Einbinder is the, is the performance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what they, you know, it's a great generational divide comedy and they learn from each other and she does learn the wisdom of, you know, just suck it up and write the jokes. Also, <laughs> just suck it up and write the jokes because that's your goddamn job. Yeah. It like, doesn't yeah. matter if you like what you're doing, suck it up. I think it was a beautiful, needed message for the, <laughs> for us all because, yeah, <laughs> is, it, is writing hard? Of course it is. But so is everything else. So is working a uh, service. So is working retail. So is breaking rocks with your hands. Um, it, it, jobs are hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this was a way to do it that wasn't like so naval because you're like, oh, I'm a creator. I'm an artist. Uh. This was definitely one where it's like, yeah, this is my job and I'm yeah. going to like eat McDonald's. And uh, again, Gene Smart. And I have to say this. Gene Smart's wig is so good. <laughs> also, Best wig. Also, <laughs> this, yeah, this is not um, a spoiler, but okay. there is a moment where there is a wax museum where uh, there is a wax museum, like a, a, a wax figure of Gene Smart's character. Mm-hmm. She did that. She did that? Oh, she yeah. got like she, no, that's she made, her. She built that. No, no, no. no she's that's posing her. as that. Yeah, that's her. Whoa. The entire time. Wow. So when you see that scene, that's acting. <laughs> no, it, it. I had to do that for a bunch of stuff. It's very stupid. Whatever. Um, it's really, really cool. hard. Um, so yeah. So when you see that and you see that her posing and just staying stock still for like five minutes. Yeah, that is genius. Okay, work. that's very cool. I'll have to, yeah. I'll have to rewatch that. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's uh, obviously this uh, uh, show is going to hit on a different and deeper level for um, comedy writers and for um, uh, people who like wigs. So I'm not, surpri- <laughs> I'm not surprised that it's Daniel's favorite, but I think that everybody should watch this show. It's just a yeah. really good comedy about uh, it's a buddy comedy, you know, one one's of this, one's of that, and they'll, yeah. they'll figure it out in the end. 
Again, it's, it's not navel gazy. It's not like, oh, yeah. art is so hard. Yeah. And please check out Hannah's real life stand up. Big fan of hers. I've known her for a couple of years out here in LA. I've always, I'm not surprising at all that she's taken off like this. She's a great, just like her actual Hannah Einbinder stand up. I think she's going to be around for a long time. Well, there you go. Oh, certainly for Hack season two. Um, <laughs> coming, coming soon with TV near you. Uh, all right. Well, we, we, we've gabbed enough, but I still want to get like people's just general picks. So let's do like kind of a speed round um, mm. where we'll just say uh, something else we liked uh, TV or film and, and, and say a little bit, just a little bit more about it. Um, and oh, we what? can, you can chime in if you want. Um, I've got on my list, aside from Dune, there's Dune again. I said, Barb and Star, the, 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 the Vista Del Mar and, uh, and bad trip. Um, I loved my octopus teacher. That was probably the the movie that made me cry this year. Was a, a documentary about a man and his octopus uh, that he that he took care of like from birth. And man, nature is so cruel, and octopuses are so smart. Uh, it, it it got me to not eat that anymore. Not that I really had the option, but I would never eat an octopus now, even though I remain <laughs> steadfastly um, omnivorous. I'm not going to uh, those things. That, what what beautiful creatures? What a beautiful relationship. I just keep thinking though about like this whole documentary. Um, there's a moment where he mentions like his wife and I just wonder what she's thinking this whole time. This man is clearly in love with an octopus more than her. Is that uh, a more calamari? Yeah. <laughs> calamari. Now squids can, squids, I'll eat a squid. Um, okay. I'll eat anything if you bread it enough. That's fine. Uh, but I think that this was a fantastic film that uh, came out earlier in the year and those really don't get uh, the love and attention come, uh, come Oscars time or even by uh, six months later. So that was one of my favorites. Uh, Eric, anything else? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll mention uh, uh, Licorice Pizza, which, you know, uh, I, wait to I, see it. Um, which I've seen twice now and there's a couple of things I wish were different about it, uh, but the stuff that works works really well for me. And it's really, I think, if 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 you click in with the characters in the world of this movie, which I very much did, you kind of just vibe with this movie. I still think it's about 20 minutes too long, but mm -hmm. I did love like the characters and the feel. And yes, it was Paul Thomas Anderson doing another movie set in the San Fernando Valley, which is my jam. Uh, but uh, I definitely think he clicked in with this. And then I also just want to mention quickly, uh, only Murders in the Building uh, has a TV runner up because fantastic show. I, I came to it late. Uh, everyone had been talking about it on my Twitter feed for weeks mm. and I caught up like the week of the finale and freaking loved it. Easily one of my favorite shows of the year. Uh, just uh, wonderful performances. Uh, putting Selena Gomez in has the third new third amigo. Uh, might not have worked, <laughs> but it worked like a charm. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'll love give that it another show. shot because I obviously love the, the the those two guys and I watched the first episode and then I was like I'm not sure if this is doing it for me so I'll I I'll think, keep going. I think you should give it a sh another okay. shot. Okay, yeah. I will give it to, give it episode mm -hmm. two for yeah, sure. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Danielle, anything else? Oh, Ted Honorable Lasso mentions. season two. Yeah, Ted yeah. Lasso season two. Yeah. I don't know. I know. You, you and Mitt Romney can just fire that up and. Uh... Oh no! No! Don't do this! Don't you do this to me. Lasso hitting. <laughs> don't do this to me. No, um, I know. I'm, I'm look. I know. I, it, I, know I, I know. It's just one of those things where it's like you know sometimes you just need something a little wholesome and it's just friends being guys and guys being friends. <laughs> friends being guys and guys being friends. Yeah. That's why I watch Casino every year. <laughs> just, just dudes being friends. Um, all right, fair enough. Uh, well, let's let's actually. I'm not going to answer Ted Lasso season two, but let's move on to uh, some of the things that were. We don't need to just rail on stuff we didn't like, but maybe the biggest disappointments or letdowns or stuff that didn't quite satisfy us on that deep carnal level that we're looking for. Um, Actually, I'm just going to start by railing on something because I don't think I really got a chance <laughs> throughout the year to talk about Dear Evan Hansen, which, ah. <laughs> which I, I think oh. is going to be an all timer. Like, you know, Cats got all the attention, but I think this was worse and more um, and harder to look away from uh, than Cats because Cats was bad on one single level and it just like yelled that level at you the entire time. This one was bad. <laughs> in every possible way and he i mean he looks like steve buscemi in like the the how do you do fellow kids meme that's he looks very young in that photo i think he's been digitally de-aged in just that promotional film <laughs> it looks like a man creeping around a high school and just on a moral sense i mean i feel like they should be in the hague um whoever was responsible for this movie and the play it's based on it's he 
you don't know the story. It's about him, like talented Mr. Ripleying his way into the family of a, a who's just lost their child to suicide, and he just like starts inventing this huge backstory about they were close just to like make Amy Adams happy. And look, I I would lie to make Amy Adams happy <laughs> personally, <laughs> but it's but it's just a really morally sick sick thing. And then it's just filmed in such a plotting and and un what's the opposite of movement just it just stands dead still like you're just watching them sit down at a table where ben platt uh, just sings monotonely at you and it's wild that this got made into a movie and then of course he says like guys responding to all the hate ben platt's like this never would have been made if I wasn't <laughs> dear Evan Hansen. No one would accept anybody else in this role, a, a mere <laughs> child. Like this would never happen. And like, first of all, even if that's true, don't say it. And second of all, that is true because your dad made the movie. <laughs> that's the other reason why you had to be the star. Um, just to like, wow. I feel like this kind of flew under the radar. It got like some Twitter heat, but people, you, you got to go back and look at dear Evan Hansen. If you want a, 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 an example of why movie musicals, uh, might not be a good idea. But then I watched Tick, Tick, Boom, which was very good. Um, so there you go. My story is great. Yeah. Uh, you, make, you, you make me want to see Dear Evan Hansen. Oh, it is. Oh, you got to you gotta watch it. Yeah. disaster. Uh, you got to watch it. It was, was, was gone biggest... too quickly. I tried, yeah. yeah. It was so much fun to watch people discover what Dear Evan Hansen was about on Twitter. Because yeah. most people were like, oh, isn't this the story of like a gay kid coming out? I think right. everyone That's what I thought. thought that That's that was 100% Also, we're going to we're gonna have to bleep you when you talked about the unaliving people because um, that gets a Twitter, that gets a YouTube. Oh. Um, so we're going to have to bleep you when you talk about someone unaliving themselves. Gotcha. But um, yeah, it, it literally, everyone was like, oh, I thought this was about like a gay kid figuring their stuff out. I didn't realize this was about like... He's creeping his any con like, man. <laughs> yeah, and then like they a have complete and a man. con man played by a, like a, I don't know how old he is, but then they raise all young. this money, but it's like it's not for mental health; it's for an apple orchard <laughs> that he lied about the kid uh, being. It's just insane. I'm like, just watch it so that I have someone else to talk to about how insane this is. Um, <laughs> this was really a, the craziest moment on on film for me of 2021. This was one that I wish we could do an honest trailer about, but not enough people know about it. Yeah, yeah, someday. It'll we'll, make we'll... the Oscars honest trailer, I'm sure. So oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Oh, <laughs> not so oh, much. Oh, well, no, it, it might get nominated for best song because everyone it does could. that thing. Well, no, they only, add did, an they extra have a, did they have a new song? Song in it? I think they did because okay. that's how you. That's, that's how they how do you, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they they always put in that one new song to get the gotcha. nomination. Yeah, well, that sounds right. like every other song or a right. sound alike <laughs> of another popular song was in the musical. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Danielle, what was your uh, biggest disappointment of the year? Oh man, I feel bad saying this, but <laughs> Black Widow. Really? Yeah. Big, wow. Okay. I, I, mean, I well, and I think it's yeah. because I did this to myself. Like mm. I have been waiting so long for a Black Widow movie. And I don't know what I expected. Um, I usually try to go into stuff with no expectations um, because when you do that, you have more fun and you enjoy it more. Yeah. But I think because it came out um, basically simultaneously, I didn't have that because usually when my job is not watching movies, I try to give myself at least a week buffer while and let all of the hype and the Twitter stuff calm down and then watch it with fresh eyes. And I didn't get to do that. And so um, I, I liked a lot about it, but I was really, and again, I think I did this to myself. I was expecting socks off because this is like the farewell to this character. And most of it is just like people hanging off of ledges and um <laughs> well it's not a lot of Black Widow. Like they didn't have the yeah. courage to do uh the movie about her assassinating people. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. The, uh, and I will say this, the intro to Black Widow, like that cool. first five to ten minutes Very is cool. one of the coolest yeah. <laughs> things that happened this year. And so watching that, I was like, oh, and maybe it's just my Seattle bias because like the Nirvana cover. Yeah. Um, but watching that, I was like, yes, yes, yes. This is a movie I want to see. And then I was like, oh, okay. Oh, 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 oh. 
Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And it, it, it has the same third act issues. And I thought that um, mm. Taskmaster, like, just a lot of missed opportunities to do cool also, things. You could do I'm a cool movie underneath so, the skin there. I'm so sorry. Taskmaster was always a lady. If you were one, I'm sorry. Yeah. As a woman who knows how, as a woman who knows women's bodies. Um, <laughs> every time I, like, I thought it was going to be, um, what's her butt? Like, I thought it was going to be her mom. Oh, Rachel um, Weiss, yeah. Rachel Weiss. Like, that, I, yeah. I really, but watching it, there was no way that wasn't a lady in a binder. Like, come on. Yeah, but I mean, what? It's like, who cares? Like, it's fine. The the, the have them. It was just underutilized. Like, you had that. Yeah. You had a, a fight between Red Guardian and Taskmaster, and they didn't do any kind of like Captain America callback or anything like that. Like, it, it, there were so many things that could have elevated that movie that I don't think they either had the uh, the courage to do yeah. or that they really just cared about. Like the the the, the smell villain with the hormone the pheromones like you can't kill him if you're in his stank radius come on do better (laughs) i'm sorry villainous axe body spray like did not do it for me it was not my thing um Uh, and i liked the movie like i did i enjoyed it but yeah and it gave us florence pew as the new black widow and i think that's frankly not great um all right erica what was it what was your biggest letdown Oh uh, God! You know, which one of these two do I pick? Um, I, I will say, um, I guess I'll say Snake Eyes because uh, my, my my runner up was Halloween Kills, just which I still enjoyed, but it just mm-hmm. was a big drop down from the last movie with the same people making it. But Snake Eyes, not, and I want to make it clear, it's not like I sat down to Snake Eyes being like, "This is gonna be awesome," mm-hmm. uh, because the main thing was that the director was like my big worry about that movie because he made Red, which I enjoy. But almost everything else he's done, uh, RIPD and uh, the couple of Divergent movies, I was like, Ugh. yeah. Uh, but I just want there to be a great GI Joe movie because I love GI Joe as like a property, and it can be so fun. And there's so much cool stuff in GI Joe that I think someone could really like do a wild, fun movie with. So they're starting over here. I'm like, okay, cool. You're gonna start over. You're gonna start over with like a the most popular character. Fine. Start small. Mm-hmm. Build back up to the GI Joe stuff. And then I watched the movie, and I was like, what? It's not even the, the 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 most damning thing about that movie, I think, is how weak the action is. Because if everything else right. had been bad, you'd be like, "Hey, cool ninja stuff, <laughs> like cool <laughs> cool fighting," um, and that can forgive a lot in a movie like this. But even that was really poorly done. Um, many I gotta say are- though, I I liked Snake Eyes except for the action. Um, oh, okay. I, really? I, I think that that was actually cool to make him. Uh, it was a more successful sleeper agent or, or or double or triple cross than something like Red Notice. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> or or uh, you know, I, I I thought that he's he's a good movie star. I think that oh, they yeah. uh, they surrounded him with all these people who can really do martial arts. Oh, Henry and Golden then they just is. shook the hell out of the camera, so you couldn't see uh, make heads or tails of anything that was going on, which is just too bad because. Again, the ingredients were there, uh, like Black Widow for a really cool movie. Um, they didn't do it. They didn't go yeah, through with it. Yeah. My other big gripe was that he uh, he's like, you know, he's supposed to be a great fighter at the beginning of the movie, but then obviously the idea is he goes to ninja school. He'll get amazing. Yeah. But, but the way the movie works um, structurally is that all we're watching him doing is trying to get accepted to ninja school. Yeah. Uh, and yet I, we're supposed to also accept that he's like even better at the end, but I'm like, but he hasn't learned anything new. <laughs> you no, know? in fact, I remember you can pass all the tests by like not fighting. Like you just right, have to like right. gracefully ask for the egg and then you have to like have a bad dream and then you have to uh, have the snake accept you. Not, none of that requires any kind of working out or cardio. So yeah, you can, you can get through ninja school pretty easy. <laughs> and I do feel like I have to say this because everyone will ask, yeah, Mortal Kombat was fine. It yeah, was it was fine. fine. Yeah, it, was it, was fine. Fine. it was fine. It was fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm resentful of Snake Eyes because it was the chance to get it right. And because they whiffed it, now they're probably not going to touch this property as yeah. a movie for 15 years. Well, it's Paramount, right? Like they, yeah, Paramount, Paramount so we'll see. They'll do it. Paramount Plus. There's a streaming yeah. series. That's what yeah, I know yeah. probably happen. Uh, all right, I'm going to move on now. Let's uh, let's quickly go through these um, and then maybe do a fan question or two. Uh, let's project ourselves five years into the future. Uh, we're dealing with the the Zeta, Catherine Zeta-Jones variant. <laughs> um, and we are, we're looking back at 2021. Uh, th- this I know this is asking a lot because I don't, re- what do I remember from 
uh, the 2016, uh, the outside of the election and getting married. Yeah, Nothing. it's an optimistic um, question. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so what will we remember uh, five years from now, uh, media wise, or what will still be resonating? Um, and I will go first and quickly, and the answer is Dune, because we'll be getting Dune 3 right about then, and we'll be rewatching <laughs> all three Dunes. Uh, Danielle, what's your what's your answer? Well, oh, geez, uh, let me, I'm sorry. Uh, let you, me wrote a, you wrote Shang-Chi. Yeah, I, I honestly, um, I think that, that that movie was so much. Uh, hmm. th- they put so much into that movie. And that third act is like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, I think that they overcrammed it. But I do think that, um, I think it was a great origin story. Um, and I, uh, aside from, you know, the reasons why it's important, I think it's a good movie. Um, yeah, I, I can see I five really, years from now yeah. us getting Shang-Chi 2. So that'd be a, this reason. Well, they've already announced it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Simu was very much like, <laughs> like on Twitter, like, oh, you thought not? I mean, I saw the uh, the Simu Lu episodes of uh, Selling Sunset and he's he's shopping for homes in LA in like oh. the seven, $7 million range. So My wife was watching <laughs> that. She said, look, Shang-Chi on yeah. her shows. <laughs> He'll 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 be around for a while if if that uh, paycheck is any indication. Um, Eric, wife. what do you what do you think we'll be looking at in uh, in five years from now? I gave like more of a like you know uh, a, a broader answer. The, the two things that I, you know looking back was like just the the MCU TV show launch in general, which is like a broad answer because that's like what four or five shows now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just taking this something that become the biggest franchise we have going and successfully launching it into the the streaming realm uh, so well. Uh, I think, you know, is going to, you know, just be look back as sort of impactful. And then the other thing I'd mentioned is, is I've not seen Squid Game. Mm. So I'm not even saying like Squid Game. I don't, you know, I know it's you know, obviously very well liked, but I think it will be looked back on both for people who really like it, but also because it was such a genuine surprise hit for Netflix. They were not heavily promoting it before it debuted and showed that like this Korean import they bought uh, could become like a worldwide phenomenon. So I think we'll see a lot of people chasing the next Squid Game, which could be the name of a reality show. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I think that the both, death. you know, fans of Squid Game specifically, and there's going to be more and that whatnot, but also just like I see both Netflix and their rivals being like, how do we find that show? Yeah, you know? which of and our then, global yeah. properties can uh, can right. we actually push uh, stateside? That's and that's, Spencer uh, yeah. Spencer may or may not eat it, so. <laughs> I may or may not to be determined. <laughs> um, <laughs> Squid, yes. All right. Uh, let's now uh, again something that's completely ephemeral and disappears mm-hmm. moments afterwards. Um, but let's try to take our minds back to the discourse around film and TV uh, uh, throughout the year. Were there any stories, uh, positive stories, negative stories that you will remember um, uh, from the year and beyond that uh, that made an impact with you? Any any kind of meta stuff that you uh, I. Out? Stop asking people who make movies what they think about superhero movies. Oh, I love it though. It's great. <laughs> no, I don't. Because I, I feel so bad because then it becomes this thing of like, oh, well, because like they have to answer off the cuff. Yeah. And like, I feel like a couple mm-hmm. of people have had really good answers about it. Um, be, because m- my honest feeling, and I think that that's the way that a lot of people feel and, and, you can't necessarily articulate it when someone kind of bum rushes you about it, mm. is those movies are fine, but I wish other movies were also getting made. That's essentially what people are saying. But it always becomes like, and like nerds, guys, we won. <laughs> we won. You won. Yeah. I'm like I've been you get I, all the I, money and all the and all the release dates. Um, it's fine. Um, stop being. But so it's just funny to. We won. No, it is funny. Uh, it's funny what? to to me to hear Scorsese have to talk about you know Ant Man and the Wasp. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> just, stop it, it, being so defensive. It, like the, the movie, like all that stuff is still going to come out. Like, why are we still reacting like this? We won. <laughs> but but also just like, because now, of course, like everyone like is looking at their, their fishing. Cause like, Ooh, if they say anything negative, that's great. That's Cause we have headlines. headlines. Yeah. yeah and uh, it, it brings me back to a weird comparison, but think about the first season, maybe the second season a little bit too, but when Glee debuted and it was white hot, 
Um, I remember there was a time when no musician could do a, a red carpet or an interview without being asked, do you want to have your song on Glee? Because mm. it was a huge deal. It was helping record sales, you mm-hmm. know, all that. Mm-hmm. And if anyone dared say no, that became the headline. Like, uh, so-and-so says they would never want their music on Glee. <laughs> that became this thing. So uh, it's all just that weird cycle of like, what's the super the hot thing? Yeah. yeah. What, what yeah, like people make bum rush. About? Like, yeah, but I'm also sure the first season of Glee it. was great and dark, and then the rest of it got really weird <laughs> first and aggressive. Was good. <laughs> Eric, what's your most memorable uh, uh, part of the discourse, capital D, uh, from it's, the year? I, I will. I, I went more with like, I guess, like a, a plot line thing and whatnot. But it, it's funny; it, it'll circle back to why one of the reasons I picked WandaVision. But I will specifically talk about something that I both loved and hated, which is the uh, Pietro Ralph Boner of it mm. all. Only as far as like it was the most exciting moment for me, like the reveal at the door, uh, which I've mentioned before. I watched at three in the morning because I couldn't sleep that night. Uh, I was so excited and I couldn't talk to anyone. So I just went on Twitter and looked at what everyone else was saying. Uh, and then all, you know, again, all the Mephisto of it, all these ridiculous people going so far searching. I ultimately did not like the Ralph Boner reveal. I did think that they were teasing us too much because they knew what the hell they were doing when they cast, obviously, Evan Peters and yep. why we'd get that excited. <laughs> but for both positive and negative reasons, that stands out to me as just a moment of like deep dive, hardcore. Again, some people took it way too far with all their theorizing, Some, but a lot of the theorizing made sense. Uh, so that just stands out to me as far as like, yeah, that, that back and forth and that just rabid, can you believe, what does this all mean? Yeah. Um, because we're we're into our comic book stories, yeah, and, and it's so hard because that's so many people's jobs <laughs> is right. to be like, what does it mean? Like, look mm. at the Easter eggs. Like, people make money, so I don't necessarily want to be like, eh, but <sighs> yeah, I think at the um, the the other end of that though is if the creators get too tuned into what the fan yes. theories are and what they are predicting or even asking for, then they try so hard to be surprising that it doesn't end up making any sense. <laughs> like I think that Game of Thrones fell into that trap of like, well, the fans guessed all the theories and all the possibilities. So we're just going to pull this one out of our butts that no one will see coming, thinking that just the surprise factor was what happened, was what made that show. Great. Oh yeah. Well, Westworld of course fell into that trap because yeah. I love the first season, but they were so kind of, it seemed like they were so bitter that people guessed one of the big twists, which yeah. didn't hurt my enjoyment of what was a really good season of TV. But then they tried to outsmart the audience after that and they made it way too right. convoluted. And then, yeah. yeah, like, and Twitter is not real life. Even if a lot of people on Twitter are saying something, then yeah. uh, that's not your, the majority of your audience who uh, never, never logs on. Um, I will say uh, the most memorable story for me of the year is Eternals being rotten. Getting uh, being not certified. Do they certify rotten? I don't know. <laughs> having, having <laughs> they send them a certificate. Review. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not intending. <laughs> a bag of puke. Um, I think that this could end up being like because this is the first time a an MCU you know main project uh, mm-hmm. got uh, got a, a overall rotten rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and mm-hmm. I think that this could be because the weird thing is is it's not the worst. Marvel movie no, that's come out. No. <laughs> Far from the worst. Um, but it could just kind of be a like a weather vane pointing to like either our expectations have gotten higher or um the critical consensus is starting to turn. Like they're saying, like, well, you can't just keep coasting by on this formula forever, even though Eternals kind of uh, broke that formula, but this tone and and you can't just keep pulling these characters out of the ether and expecting us to follow you uh, for another 25 films or what have you. So I think that this is a very interesting moment where if it, if the MCU loses the critical support or the prestige stuff, could it, can it maintain popular support as well? I don't mm-hmm. think the two are really connected. Um, look at, well, everything else that's popular. But I just think it's interesting um, if it's kind of a, a warning shot uh, across the bow of the MCU that it's not automatically fresh anymore. I think that um, hmm. I think that it's one of those things where it's like um, I don't want to say grading on a curve, but it's like if you have a student yeah. who you know can overperform and they are performing below their abilities, you judge them more harshly than other students. Um, And so I think it's one of those things where it's like, you'll have all the money for everything. You have dominated the box office for like 10 years. the best picture winner, uh, writing, yeah. Yeah. Like it's just like, I I, I do think it's one of those things where it's like, 
MCU movies now are being graded at a higher curve. And yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing. It, it's yeah. the, uh, it happened to Pixar. Um, I remember talking to this uh, about this, the friend of mine who has kids when Cars 2 came out and was like so torn apart. And he's like, look, I see a lot of truly terrible kids movies. Yeah. Cars 2 is just like a man. One of those. Yeah, right. it's, it's a bad movie. But, it's, but. It's, how it, much it, do you the, like Larry the Cable The, the guy, Pixar whole... curve made it like, <laughs> you know. And so, yeah, it's like yeah. That, that you do have that thing of like, we have very high standards for you. Yeah. Um, and so that people are sort of like looking a little more intently than they might at what might otherwise be another comic book movie. We'll see. Yeah. I wonder though, yeah. what, what of the next year's projects could, uh, is at risk of getting um, a, a rotten rating? Like, I don't know. That, that's probably a question for another episode. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in our looking ahead one that we're going to record right after this. Uh, about that. <laughs> Um, we, we're, we're running out of time here. Let's go, let's go quickly. Can I mention one thing real quick? Yeah. Whether or not Andrew Garfield is in Spider-Man or not, we don't know at this time. If you're watching this episode, you probably do oh, know. Oh God, he's in it. Either, Come on. <laughs> either way, it's funny. Either way, it's funny. No matter the other <laughs> that it's funny that he had to answer all these questions while promoting this movie about rent. And he had to just instead <laughs> constantly either act like he's in Spider-Man or very genuinely plead to people to stop saying that he's in Spider-Man. He's so. literally promoting this movie about like this writer artist existential crisis about turning 30, which is fine, by the way. <laughs> 30, 30 is dope. Um, and then everyone's like, well, Andrew, are you Spider Man? He's like, oh, I'm, not. Um, I'm not. I can't <laughs> say I'm Brit. I'm too old. <laughs> he's oh, trying to win. It. He's like legitimately trying to win an Oscar. Like he's trying yeah. to get nominated right, right. for an Oscar, and it's just instead become, are you going to show up in the last what we can assume seven minutes or whatever? Of he Spider-Man. is, but he's just going to do Spider Man. Turn off the dark. He's just going to do the music <laughs> um, over the credits, like like a Will Smith song. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, we have we have some challenges to end up. Uh, sorry, we're not going to do fan questions. There, there's no. Save them. <laughs> save them. Uh, we'll save them. Um, but I want to ask uh, slash Ryan had for us to ask. Uh, we're going to guess without looking the most viewed honest trailer of 2021. What was our biggest hit of the year? Um, I w- want to say Squid Game, but I think that the, it, do we count the whole year's views or like the fir- the most views in like two weeks because i oh. feel like something big in january february is probably accumulated more views that's a, that's a good point and you could see that in the top 10 list i didn't do like first seven days that would have taken time and i'm <laughs> <laughs> well, even though i know it's wrong i'm gonna say squid game uh what's what's your guys guess mine was fast nine yeah because uh, i think that, they that was as like... well we're, we're we're bigger fans of fast than the rest than the people are <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't have a, a good guess for this either. And so even though I kind of know it's probably going to be wrong too, I'll go with Snyder Cut only because Snyder Cut oh, is not yeah. nearly, Cut but there's such year. an online fan base for that, even though they did not turn out enough to make it HBO Max's biggest hit yeah. at all this year. Um, but I'll just say Snyder Cut. Well, I what don't is even it remember. Right? We literally yeah. do like 52 of these a year. Did yeah. we do <laughs> Snyder Cut uh, in addition to the DCEU one? Yep, those were separate yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what do you uh, do? Fifty-two of these years. It's not money. Well, the top <laughs> ten were. One of you was right, and it was Spencer Squid Game. Oh, Squid Game. Nice. Ah, and okay. that follows a trend because I, I'll have to double check, but I believe Tiger King, along with Friends, were like the top ones of 2020. Yeah, so I think wow. Friends beat them all, but Tiger King was another one of those huge. So like that kind of big one Netflix show a year that like really yeah, my other guess was going to be Invincible. Up. So I guess these like. These TV series that are like flash yeah. in the pan, but uh, they're the biggest in Australia. It's okay, good job. Yeah, Invincible next year. was number was number five, and I would say like that's the one that punched above its weight the most. Like the fact that that am- like an Amazon Prime animated yeah. show yeah. got a couple million views really quickly and was really popular. Yeah. One I think that's uh, Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four was number two. Snyder mm. Cut was three. Then it kind of starts to hit the ones you would think: Black Widow, Invincible, WandaVision, Godzilla vs Kong, Suicide uh, yeah. Squad, Mando season two, and then Loki. Awesome. Okay. All right. Good year. Good year in film uh, or pop culture, at least. Uh, all right. So let's uh, let's end on this. Um, speaking of uh, timelessness and uh, legacy, and you know, really wrapping the year up with a bow. And I know we argue a lot about the best films of the year and the Oscars and the Academy Awards and what should and should be in there. So I say to us here, can we recall without looking it up what the best picture nominees were from February of 2021? Absolutely I, not. Do we remember any of them? <laughs> Uh, I know um, Nomadland won Best Picture. I know what, Nomadland. 
what was what let's was try to res on my one i cheated oh, oh sound of metal sound of metal yeah i cheated really good metal. I, I looked at my letterbox for what i'd watched okay. and so I, I i didn't look at the list of what got nominated but i looked at what i'd watched to see what would strike a chord minari 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 yep um the Blow trial of the watch. chicago seven Oh, okay. oh god! Yeah. And guys, one of the best titles to say, Mank, 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 <laughs> Mank, Mank. Was uh, was Lady Joker this year? Promising young woman. Yes. Promising young woman. <laughs> All right. Give me a yep. second. Yeah, Lady Joker. <laughs> good one. Good one. I think there's two more. There's there's two more that you guys are forgetting. One of which was like kind of a part of the big story of the year of. It, not for this category, for a different category, but this movie was a co- controversial part of the night. Interesting. Huh. Like, different category. Cats? No. No. So if bit. you Come remember, there's a certain ca- <laughs> it, it ended on best actor and the controversy oh, was. Oh, oh. Um, oh um, certain actor Judas and the Black best... Messiah? Was no, 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 no. The, the, the one, one with Chadwick okay. Bosman. Um, I'm blanking on the title. Oh, oh no, um, the, the One acting. Night in Miami? Or Hopkins. No. Anthony okay. Hopkins won acting. The Father. The Father? Was that it? Yep, and that's eight. And you said and Judas, that's eight. and that was the other one. Yep. Ah, okay. Look at that. We did, yeah, it. We Father, did it. We did it. Judas <laughs> and the Black Messiah, Mank, Minari, Nomad Land, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, The Trial of Chicago Seven, and uh, yep. Okay. I should, re- oh! I should do my annual Mank rewatch. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like a, cri- a Christmas with Mank. <laughs> yeah, Mank yeah. Mania. A Mank Mania. Good for us. We talk about movies and we remembered all and we remembered most, eight of them. The, the most important movies. Of the year. It only took four of us, uh, and Brian is at his computer uh, looking at it. So that's uh, that's we our promise. Is, uh, that's the kind of knowledge base you have to work with here. But we uh, will be back um, shortly. I don't know when this is going to come out or the next episode, but we are going to come back and film an episode about what we're looking forward to the most in 2022. So happy holidays to everyone who watched. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, everyone involved. Uh, We will see you all shortly. Bye-bye.